Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Peter Robinson and today I'm going to talk about dual use keys. So let's share my screen. So why shouldn't you use the same key for signing and encryption or for that matter for anything else? Um, so when I refer to dual use keys, that is exactly what I've just said, where you're using one cryptographic key for two types of operations. And so for instance, you have RSA keys, um, and so they can be used for signing and encryption. Um, elliptic curve keys, they can be used for signing or key agreement. So you may have heard of um, EC keys being used for encryption, and really they're using um, an algorithm called ECIES under, under the covers. And what that does is it does key agreement as part of the algorithm. So it's really doing key agreement, but you can think of it as encryption. You've also got um, symmetric keys and they can be used for encryption or authentication. So as we can see, you've got um, keys can be used for multiple um, algorithms. And so the, the core um, thing that I'm going to convince you of by the end of this talk is that you should only use one key for one type of operation and not reuse them. So you shouldn't be using, say, a key for encryption or and signing and key agreement and macking. You should just focus on one algorithm. And um, yeah, if you do, you're, you're going to be leaking information potentially um, or have um, issues. So let's get to that. The other thing that you want to be careful of is that um, you don't want to go using the same key for different security domains. So for instance, imagine you've got a symmetric key and you're using it to encrypt some configuration data and you, when you start up your application, you decrypt that configuration data. You might then also need a symmetric key for say encrypting a communications channel. So you really wanna use a different symmetric key because you've got completely different security domains. And so you shouldn't be reusing the key. So let's walk through why you shouldn't have a key used for say encryption and signing. And so the first one is key cycle times. And so you can imagine that different keys need to be rolled over at different intervals. And so you can imagine, say, your signing key, you might want to have it available for a long time for verifying, but then maybe you want to be able to only have an encryption key available for use um, for a shorter period. And it once it's um, finished um, its usage period, the um, public key can no longer be used, nor can the private key. So um, you could imagine you know, having those different key usage periods. The second um, issue or area is revocation. So you could imagine that you might want to ha have um, a key and you decide that it's being compromised. And so you really want to um, revoke it. And so if you've got a signing key that's also been used for encryption, then you know, you'd be wanting to revoke that signing key, but you want to still be able to use the key for um, decryption purposes. And so you're going to be left with a problem because, you know, can you just revoke it for one type of operation? And it'd be good to be able to just say, look, this key is completely revoked and I'm revoking my signing key and not affect your encryption key. Another part, is, another thing to consider is key escrow. And so, um, you know, normally you want to have the signer, um, the, the user of that, that signing key to be the only one with access to it. So for instance, you know, you wouldn't want say your Ethereum key to be accessible by many people. But then um, in some situations, say for encryption keys, you may be required to have um, that decryption private key escrowed um, by someone. So you could have some application where say some authority needs to be able to um, decrypt information, say even if you leave a company and um, you know so that would be a situation where even if some if once someone's left a company, no one should be able to sign with their private key, but you could imagine that you might want to decrypt with their private key. So hence having the same key used for signing and encryption would be really bad in that situation. Um, algorithmic compromise. So you can imagine that um, say one cryptographic algorithm gets compromised 
and say you could recover the private key from say some data in the public key and if if you've isolated your um, system so that you've got using one key for one thing and another key for another thing that compromise is only going to affect that one key usage but if you're using the key for multiple things then it's going to affect all of the usages which is going to be pretty bad so that that would be um, that's not a good thing Another one that probably comes to the heart of the problem is um, security proofs. So um, pure cryptographers, when they develop an algorithm, they come up with a security proof to say this, um, you know, key with this data produces this information and processes it in this way, and it's secure. So they come up with a mathematical proof to show that something is secure. And they do it for that single usage. So they don't consider, well, if, you, you've, if you've got this information here and then you're using the key for this as well, um, is it still secure? So because you don't have these joint security proofs, then um, you know, you're not gonna be able to know if it's, um, if it's secure to, to do say encryption and signing with the same key. Um, and also in certain situations, so um, for RSA key pairs, assuming you have no padding and hashing. So normally when you use RSA, um, you've got padding and you've got hashing. So um, this is a very I don't know, esoteric um, use case that, you know, most people would not encounter. But you can see that, you know, there are situations when you could use just the pure mass of the cryptographic scheme to um, recover the private key. And that'd be really bad. Um, you should also be careful about using the same key, but with different parameters. So you, for instance, you wouldn't want to use say an RSA key with say SHA-256 and an RSA key with SHA-512 um, at the same time. If you need, do need to have different hashing algorithms with the, um, you know, to, for the signatures, then you really should use a different RSA key. And so, in summary, you really want to be using um, different keys for different cryptographic algorithms, operations, and parameters. So if you've got a different key usage, you really should be um, using a different key. Additionally, um, if you've got multiple security domains or situations that you're using um, cryptography in, you really want to have a different key for each security domain. And um, if you've got any questions, by the way, just post them as comments on this video. Um, and um, so typically, um, the, well, this is being posted in the Ethereum Engineering Group Meetup's YouTube channel. Um, and if you want to be invited to um, or have the ability to register for talks, um, go to that um, the, uh, meetup and um, in, to engage further in the conversation, um, there's an invitation to the Slack channel. Um, there is example code for some of the um, talks and that's available in that GitHub repo. Uh, in addition, there's a formal methods reading group that meets every two weeks, every fortnight. And so if you wanna find out more about that, um, just join the Slack workspace. All right, thank you everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.